We say a song to the Jesus. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning. Let's all rise up to our feet and sing some songs and worship His name this morning. Here we go. One. Rise up to our feet this morning. Sing with me. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your all. Come, just as you are to worship. as you are before your God. Come. One day we tumble to confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly Is it time to give your heart? We come just as you are to work. worship the King. Come just as you are before your God. Oh, come. One day every knee will bow. One day every time will bow. Yes, you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still, the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day we, one day every time will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still, the greater, still the greatest treasure. Remains One day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now Oh come We come We come to sing I 
other name. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Miranda. And uh, we are so glad all of you could join us at Capstone to worship Jesus this morning. Aren't you happy to worship Jesus this morning? Yes. So the main reason I come to Capstone is because I have a, a relationship with God and my, I build my relationship with God, sorry, every time I come to church. Either it's the people, the worship, or the word. The presence of God has always been there. And I take back the presence of God when I go from the church. And that is so important. And I hope that each one of you are able to feel that today. Without further ado, let's all turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. It's so beautiful that God says that He comforts us in all our troubles. All our troubles. The emphasis on the word all. He is a God of all comfort and He comforts us in all our troubles. So when you worship God this morning, I pray that you may leave all your troubles where they are, at His feet. Just say, Lord, I give up. Whatever my situation is, whatever I'm going through, you are in control. And let your peace and your comfort cover me. Forget about anything and everything. You might be going through a difficult job. You might be going through a difficult relationship. But know that through it all, Jesus is holding your hand. And he's going to take you through it. Amen. We sing your love. Yeah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made you this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with Here I am to worship, here I am to bow, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together, Lord, you're all together, all together wonderful. of all days, King of all days, oh so highly exalt, glorious in heaven above, humbly you came.
morning church and bless his name saying Lord here I am to here I am to bow down here I am to say Lord that you're my you're all together lovely all together wonderful Aradhana karu Sadako majuka Ishu sirf duhi Mera khuda Tu hai ati sundar Tu hai ati yogya Tu hai ati adab Mujhu aradhana karu Aradhana so wonderful how great is the love how deep and wide is the love I know the king he loves me no matter what he loves me so much and I love him back this morning we love you Jesus we love you we love you. Can you say with all your heart this morning, God, I love you with all my heart. Say that with, say that. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, King. I love you. I love the King and the King loves me. I love the King and the King loves me. I love the King and the King he loves me. I love the king and the king loves me. I love the king and the king loves me. I love the king and the king he loves. Can you sing with all your heart? Sing, I love the king. I love the king and the king loves. Oh, I love the king and he loves me so. And he loves me.
love came down and rescued me. I love the king and love came down and set me free. I'm not the same. I'm the new creation in his name. I love the king and the king loves me. I love the king and the king. Oh, I love you, Jesus. With all of my heart, I love you. I love the king. Oh, I love the king and the king. I love the king and the king. So here I am. Lift your hands wherever you are. Sing you all together, lovely Jesus. You're all together. You're all together, wonderful. Jesus, here I am. Here we are to bow at your feet, our sovereign King. Here we are to say that you are our God. And nothing can change that. You're so lovely. You're so worthy, worthy. God, you're so wonderful. So good. Jesus. God, this morning we come to give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing love that you, that you showed for us. The Bible says in Psalms 103, the bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the benefits that he has done. We are standing at the last week of November. 11 months have passed away. And I'm sure irrespective of what is going on, irrespective of our troubles and sorrows, we still chose to say that God is faithful and God is good all the time. So this morning as we sing this song, with a grateful heart, choose to bless his name. Choose to give him thanks for all the blessings that he has done in our lives, which are beyond our imagination, beyond that we could ever think of, that he has blessed us, blessed our church, he blessed us as a family, he blessed our business, he's blessed our work, he blessed in our schools, in our colleges. He's been so faithful. And say, God, here I am, and I will sing praise with thanksgiving. For your favors towards me are countless, Lord. Who am I that you're so mindful of? That you bless me beyond that I could ever imagine every single day of my life and every single day of our lives God you remain faithful in spite of you being unfaithful God you remain faithful you remain faithful to generation to generation so here we are together as church we give you thanks Kesa Suti Gamunga Hey Shumere Kuda Upaka Tere Be Shuma Koti Koti Suti Danyawa Danyawat ke sa suti gaabunga he ishu me re khuda upka rute re be shuma koti koti suti danyawat yogi. Ta se bad ke diya he apni daya se tu ne mujhe yogi 
हैंड एंड सिंह धन्यवाद के साथ धन्यवाद के साथ सुती गाऊंगा हे सुमेरे खुदा Our hearts with a grateful heart we sing. Danyawa, kisa suti ga. Same with the with the hands lifted up towards heaven with all of us. Danya wa, with a grateful heart. Suti ga, with your hands outstretched arm. Hey, Yeshu me re kuda upkar tere ve shuma. For the wonderful and uncountable blessings that I've seen in my life, there's not much to give back, but I come with a very grateful heart. That's what the song means. I mean, it's so true for each one of us who's standing here in His presence. What can we offer Him back? What can we give Him? Just maybe nothing but just ourselves, just the way we are, just the little that we do, the little that we have. We can just come and offer back to God. But as we come to a time of prayer, I do, I do, I have two, two needs that are very pressing this morning, and then I want to do something in the prayer, and then we'll go into a time of prayer. So please pay attention. We are praying for Brother Joel. He's uh, admitted in the hospital right now. He's in the hospital. His sugars are extremely high, but uh, the doctor is saying he's very critical. But I'm trusting and believing. As each one of you raise your voice, that it'll go and set him free and heal him completely. I'm believing, and I'm trusting. I'm believing for you as well. 
and also continue with this sister Susan. Um, uh, she's she's uh, carrying with lots of complications. Um, the doctor is not really okay with her to be on the journey of the motherhood, but then we are trusting God. We are trusting God that God will just heal her completely. Now she will have a wonderful motherhood. You know, things will come back to normalcy, especially for the family. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to hold on sometimes. It's not that you do not believe in Jesus, but the situations that are around you, sometimes you just want to slide back on your faith. But then you pray that the family will stand strong, will look up, look up to Jesus. You know, we say, it's in the Bible that says, be still and know that he is God. And, I, and pray over that words for that family, that, that family will see God come through to their lives. So two needs that I have spoken out. One is Brother Joel, who is right now in the hospital because of high sugars, and Sister Susan. Along with those two requests, is something that is wonderful that I want to do for you. As we sang, and as I, I can just say, raise your hands, and I'm sure the entire congregation here will raise their hands for the wonderful blessings that you have tasted and seen. But this is something that I want you to do. I want you to hold the person's hand that's standing beside you, whether it's a brother or a sister. Hold their hands tight and thank God for their blessings in their life. Thank God God has been wonderful. Thank God they're still leaning on to God. Thank God for the troubles and situations they have. Thank God they still believe in Jesus. Thank God they're able to fight their battles with Jesus. Say a prayer of blessing for them. And, and, and equip, pray that God will equip them. Their faith will rise. Come on. All of you, close your eyes. Pray for the person beside you. Pray, uh, uh, say a prayer of blessing into their lives. Your every word has a power. If you don't have a, part, a partner, find somebody. Some hosting guy, some, some techie, some, just hold somebody's hand and and this is your opportunity to pray and speak a blessing. However, the Lord leads you, and then I will pray. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, that you are a God who listens, who God, who answers, God who smiles, God who provides, God who restores, God who sends the breakthrough, God of miracles, God who can move the mountains. Lord Jesus, we pray for our person who's on the right and to the left. And we pray a prayer of blessing in their life, Jesus. May you come through thoroughly in their life, Lord. Let them experience you to a larger measure, Father God. Whatever they're going through, Abba Father, I pray, Jesus, that they will stand strong in you and they will see you come through for their lives, Father God. Also, I pray for Brother Joel, who's right now in the hospital. I pray, Jesus, the doctor says it's critical. But we give it unto your hands, Father God. There is nothing, nothing under the sun that you cannot do, Father God, in your will, in your blessed will. I pray and ask Jesus, if it is thy will, please make him completely whole again and let that family praise you, Jesus. I pray for Sister Susan. I thank you for the little ray of hope that you have given us, but we want to see a complete recovery in that family. And as they go through the storm, Father God, I pray the entire family will stand up for Jesus. Their faith will be raised up. Their, their, this testimony will be passed on to generations to say how good God has been to their family. Oh, we praise you. We praise you for every prayer that has been prayed and is answered. We bless your name. We worship you. God is good. You're so good. You're so good. Come on, sing with me. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. 
presence. Did you really enjoy the time in worship? Yes? Why don't we appreciate our worship team for letting us into a wonderful time of, uh, in worship. Praise God. Uh, now this is my privilege to welcome all my new friends, new guests who are coming for the first time to Tapstone. Is there anybody coming for the first time? Can you just wave your right hand? Yes. One over here, one over the Church, let's join our hands and welcome them. One over here. Thank you so much for joining us, friends. Thank you. Could you please uh, stay lifting your hands up? Please, we would appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. My name is Yashwan. I serve in this church in missions. I'm very glad that you are here this morning. And you will be receiving a small packet. And, uh, and also, you'll, you'll be receiving this card which says, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you wanted to get in touch with church and want to know more about uh, the updates of the church, uh, you can just uh, you know, uh, scan this QR code and uh, give all your details so that we, we, we will be in touch with you and give you all the details and updates of the church. 
and after the service please stay back have fellowship with us uh, we want to meet you and you know know more about you and you know uh, uh, and say thank you for joining if you are if you don't have any home church you're most welcome we have 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services happening every sunday so you're most welcome and and join us along you know to worship our god amen so um, and also uh, if you church if you have any prayer request or prayer praise points you can just grab this card which is prayer and praise card there is a team which is praying for you there is a team which is uh, praising for you, along with them for you you know for all the things what god is doing in your life we are there to pray for you so if you have any prayer request or praise points you can just you know write it down and, and you know give it back to any ashes uh, no in our uh, church and also as we have been announcing our uh, uh, our christmas celebrations is on uh, 15th of yeah so 15th of december right nobody's excited come on we are celebrating jesus on that day come on yes so 15th of uh, december we are going to celebrate our our pre christmas celebrations and uh, the place is 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 is, is, uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, finalized and we are meeting at uh, jayberry lawns it's uh, you not know, towards to high techs uh, you know there is a bit you know big command towards to the high techs uh, there's a, a place called jayberry lawns you can just find it out in google we will be giving you the uh, details soon in your in the whatsapp group and in facebook and in website too so uh, meet you all there 15th of december evening we will be having a combined service not singe campus you know will also join along with us and worship god and we will not meet here on that day we will be meeting at the uh, venue uh, jayberry lawns evening 6 o'clock and uh, next year amazing beautiful mission trips are lined up uh, i know some of you are waiting for that so uh, this is the great opportunity for you to join the mission trips we have uh, uh, three international trips and two uh, na- national trips kenya bhutan and laos uh, you can just be part of uh, the mission trips and also varanasi alhabad and jharkhand so mark your calendars it's uh, uh, it will be between you know uh, march and april a 10 day trip a short trip we have planned this uh, uh, this trip um, uh, uh, one weekend would you know, would fall on those 10 days so that you can just take uh, you know three to four to five days leave so uh, dates also are there if you if you want to know, know more about uh, mission trips and you know more updates about that you can meet me after the service or pastor janet or or any other volunteers um, uh, they will be helping you in you know giving all the details and also um, most of you have took this shoe boxes right so the uh, next sunday is the last week uh, we will be you know, uh, you know uh, gathering all the gift boxes what we have you know took and you know um, next week we we going to you know bring them all together and we'll plan to distribute them to the needy children and if you haven't uh, took any shoe boxes we have more shoe boxes available you can just grab as many as you want so that we can actually help the needy children poor children street children to give to share the love of Christ the, the joy what we have so we could, we can share the, uh, that love to those children all right yes yes all right so it's time to give our tithes and offerings if we if you hold your tithes and offerings in your, in your hand we will we'll give uh, prayerfully let's pray a gracious heavenly father we thank you lord we thank you for all the things that that you're doing in our lives we want to praise you and give it back to you lord We thank you for the jobs. Thank you for uh, the business that you have given to us. Thank you for the family. Thank you for all the responsibilities that you have given to us. What all we have today is because, because of you, Father. <coughs> thank you once again as your church stretches their hands and their hearts, Father God. I pray that you bless them. We want to thank you. In Jesus' mighty precious name I pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to surprise you today. I want to... I want to sing a song and you know, it's a beautiful song in Telugu the most favorite song so it, it talks about time so it goes like this
How good was Pastor Ashwant? How good was he? He was really good, right? And I was, that is a talent that I envy, you know, to sing like that. Such a wonderful song that he chose to sing today. Um, that, you know, choose to praise our God. There's, there's something beauty about singing in vernacular. You know, singing in our own, our own language. It actually, um, it is our song, right? It comes from, from, from the guts of our hearts and we kind of express it much better there in, in singing in our own language. So it's, it's just that we can't do vernacular service here, but, um, but that's, that's so nice to worship our God in, in our own languages. All right. Um, this, this today, this week is, um, is a very important week for us. Well, the past week was very important for us. It's actually a historic week for, for Capstone. We, we, we started 12 years ago. We started right from the beginning itself. We, you know, we supported churches whenever we can. We supported uh, pastors whenever we can. But it's actually last six years we have been very systematic in our giving for missions. Um, every year we set aside a budget to support um, churches that are half-finished, churches that need a seed money to build their churches, their buildings and things like that. So we've, we've done a, quite a bit of uh, those churches. But this week, the, the past week, was the first time that we have actually built a complete church through our giving. Uh, so it's in Jharkhand. Um, it's, it's so good to see that, you know, we could give uh, for, the, for the building of this entire church uh, for the first time. Uh, in fact, um, in September, when we celebrated our anniversary, I announced that this year, we, our goal is to build 10 churches like this. And uh, the first one is finished in three months. And in the next uh, nine months, we're going to do next to the rest of the nine. I don't know how we will do that, but we will do that. You know, we just have to take the first step and God, is, God started providing. It's been an honor for me on Tuesday to go there um, in Jharkhand. Um, it's, it's almost nine hours journey from Ranchi. Um, I had to uh, fly into Ranchi and then travel for six hours to a place called Dumka. And from Dumka, deep in jungles, it's almost like an end of the world. You know, while we were traveling, um, me and the pastor who, um, who is instrumental in, in getting that place, um, you know, the church into, uh, into shape, uh, he was talking to me and, and we kept driving and kept driving and kept driving. And I said, how long are we going to go? He looked at me and said, that's called end of the world. I mean, we are actually fulfilling the Great Commission, taking the gospel to the end of the world. Wherever the church is going to be, that's the end of the world. And it was truly the end of the world. Um, the kilometers around, around us, uh, there are no, no villages. There are very few villages across the mountains. And this pastor, um, start, this church is started in 1993 um, by, by, by one of the um, you know, PHC, um, Pentecostal Holiness Church pastors who had gone to that, those tribal areas and build, uh, you know, started reaching out to people, the tribals with the gospel. And one of them who accepted Jesus Christ, his story is an interesting story. Um, he was really tired with his life. I'm, I know I'm just off my message right now, but this is a story worth sharing. So um, he, he, he was looking for gods. He's a tribal man. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have a name for God, but he was looking for a God. And uh, one morning he decided to himself that he's going to walk from his home you know, wherever uh, he could go to, as he's walking, whichever stone he hits, he, he decided that that's going to be his God. That's the one he's going to pick up and come, bring it back to home and start worshiping it. That, that was what he decided. So he started that morning because he was looking for peace. He was looking for some kind of healing in his family. And he started walking that morning. And as he was uh, walking in the jungle, somewhere in the jungle, he met with the pastor who started this church. And uh, b before he could hit any rock, by the way. <laughs> and, and he shared gospel to him. And that guy knelt down there and accepted Christ only to go back to home to find that his family was healed of the diseases. So he and his entire family came to Christ and decided that they're going to serve God. In fact, the church building, the place where um, uh, the, the church is built is the, is the farm, in, you know, his, his own farm. Uh, and he would... Um, he decided that he's going to serve God. From then, he joined the other pastor and began to worship. And when he moved out, the, the, the one who brought into the knowledge of Christ, uh, he took over the church and he began to dream that one day he, they will be able to build a church building there. 
27 years they've been waiting for building. 27 years. He said, I have got land. I didn't have money. And he's in such end of the world that the people who lived there couldn't afford to give. Even the church members, he had more than 150, by the way, inside the church. Uh, 150 members, uh, when, when they started fundraising, in the last 27 years, they could manage to raise up 8,000 rupees. And he was waiting for, for God to send someone to, uh, to support him. And uh, when my friend, who was our last year grand, um, anniversary speaker, uh, he serves in Varanasi. He's, 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 uh, he's, he's the pastor of one of the fastest growing churches in, in, in Varanasi. And uh, when we both were talking, uh, he talked about this church and he said, can you do something about it? Can we do something about it? I said, yeah, absolutely, yes, definitely. And then um, that, that's the same Sunday, last, last um, and, uh, September, three months ago, I made the announcement that we're going to build the 10 churches, not because of that, but we just made the announcement that this year we, we want to build 10 churches. And, and that week, me and Michael were talking about this church. And that next Sunday, after the, um, the, the week prior to anniversary, I think, uh, was the week, uh, one of our church members walked up to me and said, um, I'd like to give for a church building. I just retired from my retirement fund. I want to give. And he gave me exactly three lakhs check. And I sent it directly to that church. And we built that church. So I realized this. Three lakhs, we may not build a building, but they can get a building. So even if we don't have a building, it doesn't matter. We get, got somebody else got a building. That's, uh, that's something I, I, I want to thank God for people like you who chose to give, uh, for people like that. They will always be grateful. Did you see our logo on the top of it? They actually painted it, you know, by, by their hand. They made even a plaque, a plaque for me uh, to take carry back home. I forgot today to get it here. In fact, even that was hand painted, our church logo. It was so nice to see our church logo somewhere deep in jungles of Jharkhand. That's nice. <laughs> And, and, you know, the people becoming the church. And it was truly people becoming the church. And I told them, I, I spoke in the church uh, uh, for, the, uh, for their opening, and I said, hey, just as we gave, you should learn to give to somebody else. Build another, another church through your giving. And, you know, who knows, you might be bringing somebody else's 27-year-old dream to fulfillment. So um, they have received, the way they received us, I, we could see the joy. They've been waiting. It's, it's you know, it's like they've been holding on for this dream to come into fulfillment for 27 years. And we got the opportunity to help them to realize their dream. So thank God for, um, you know, I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to be part of their dream fulfillment. So if, if God challenges you, you should do that too. Um, you know, if, uh, if you have something that you want to give away, um, you've been saving it, but somebody else might need it. In fact, I'm going to talk about it today in the message. But if, you, if God speaks to you, just don't hesitate to come up to me and talk to me. We will direct that money to a church that needs to be built. Okay? All right? Church, let's be, I don't know whether we're going to build our church by next September. I'm, I'm hoping we will do that. But even if we don't do that, let's build the 10 churches that we, you know, for somebody else. And uh, it will be a great joy. In heaven, we'll be more appreciated not, for not having a building, by the way. And helping somebody else get a building. All right, so um, not only because of that, but this week is also a very important week for us. Uh, we finished two years of our Narsinghi campus. Uh, we're going to celebrate this Saturday. Come on, come on. This Saturday, we're going to have a celebration there. Uh, and uh, we're going to celebrate our second anniversary, Narsinghi service, uh, Narsinghi campus. Brother Edward Williams is going to join us on that evening. Uh, if, you have, if you know who is Edward Williams, um, you don't get to hear him on Sunday here because he's He's kind of very packed up. Uh, so he, in spite of how much um, allurements we were trying to give him, Anna, this is your church, Anna. He said, no, I can only do Saturday. So he's coming on Saturday evening. Uh, if you want to hear him, you should come to Narsinghi service. Not just for hearing him, but I think you should join us at Narsinghi celebration just simply because uh, you'll be an encouragement to that church, um, you know, to, to continue to grow. Uh, we thank God for, uh, for the way that God is blessing that church. Um, using Pastor Nani and the rest of the team um, to, uh, you know, week after week to build people in that place. So uh, uh, do, do, don't, don't forget, this is a great opportunity for us to, you know, join Narsinghi campus and, and celebrate with them. And, of course, get to hear a great man of God on this Saturday. If you, 
if you want to come and you don't know how to come, uh, you just have to speak to us while you're going out after the service. Uh, we will help you out to come there. All right? We're in the middle of a series called Grow. Well, we're actually finishing a series called Grow. We've been talking about uh, four things, essential ingredients in our personal growth and as a church. We started off uh, this series talking about what is our prayer for you. Uh, that it, our dream for you, each one of you, is that you may know God. In, in, in one single statement, um, we want to see every person who walks into this church knows God personally. That they gain a knowledge of God, that they walk away from this place with an encounter, a personal encounter with God. You don't need to know my name. You don't need to know how tall I am. You need to know God in this church. That's our prayer. Every week, every day, when we think about you, all of you, and when we pray for you, this is what we pray. That God, whatever we do from the beginning to the end of these two hours that you choose to come and spend here, that God would speak to you, reveal himself to you, and that you would walk away with the knowledge of God, personal knowledge of God. You need to know God. You don't need to know anybody else. You just need to know God. That's our prayer. Our dream for you is that. Um, but not only that, we talked about um, not only God wants you to know him, but he wants you to know that you got a purpose, that he designed you. You got a, you got a unique design by which God created you, with which God created you. Your design involves your skills, your talents, your experiences, life experiences, and most importantly, the day you have accepted Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God enabled you with a special gift. We call them spiritual gifts. Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In fact, we'll come to that, that chapter one more time today. Um, that God equipped you with a special blessing. His gifts that empower you to accomplish His purpose in your life here on earth. That you should not be ignorant of them. In fact, you should know what God gave you and begin to use them. We're going to talk about that today a little more. Um, so our dream, your design... Then we talked about, last week, we talked about God's desire for you. That God's desire in one single word is this, that he wants you to be an influencer. That each of you are called to be a, a, a person who is a change agent in somebody else's life. That he called you in your workplace, in your classrooms, among your neighborhoods, um, um, in, in, among your relationships, um, among your relatives, that you be the one who influences people positively for a change. That, uh, in that sense, you are a leader. He called you to be a leader. Using his gifts for the benefit of others so that others may change. Of course, you are changed, by the way. Doesn't mean you don't change and others change. That doesn't work. Right? You change in the process. You influence somebody else to change. I told you last week that whether you like it or not, you are an influencer. Whether you agree with, with me or not, you are still an influencer. That each of us, by not saying a single word in our entire lifetime, let's assume that you live for 60 years, that we would influence more than 30,000 people just by our silence. That there are 30,000 lives that depend on, on you, even if you don't do anything for them. They will learn from you. They will do what you are doing. They will make the same decisions that you're making. So you are an influencer. You better use your influence to make a positive impact on the life of people. That's God's desire for you. And we talked about it. That even, um, even when you think that you are limited, God, uh, God, is not, God is choosing to ignore your limitations and set a standard for you, expectation. We talked about that, didn't we? We said we, God knew your limitations before he set his expectations for you. He already knows what you are limited with, but he set his expectation for you. Now, we also told you that even, even if you walk up to God and say, God, I don't have resources, I come from a small family, I don't speak well, I don't know how to speak English, in spite of your limitations, God is not going to reduce his expectations. He's not going to do that. Just because you say, I've got limitations, God is not going to come down. In fact, he's going to increase his expectation, like the way he did with Gideon. God's only limitation is your expectation of him. That you can choose not to believe God and walk away from his will. You can do that. And that's the one thing that can limit God. 
from actively working in your life. So your expectation can limit God. Instead of that, you choose. You need to choose to be inspired by God's expectation of you. That the God decides to believe in you is a brilliant thing. Think about it. Who are we that God chooses to believe in us and decides that I'm going to use your life to make an impact on somebody else's life? That thought itself should inspire us. You know, that's what I was talking about. Um, today, we're going to talk about how then do we make that difference? It's your decision. You see, I can talk about our dreams and our prayers for you. I can t- talk about how beautifully, wonderfully you are designed. I can even talk about how much God desires for you to make a difference. But it comes down to your choice. It's always your decision to make a difference or not. You get to choose what to do with your life. You see, you are one choice away from making a difference with your life. So I'm going to talk, this morning we're going to talk about how do we make a difference. Um, let me set the context for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, verses uh, 4 and 5 and 6. Let me read that for you. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of all of them. There are different kinds of services, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Paul, um, in chapter 12, is basically introducing the spiritual gifts that God brought into our lives. Before he talked about those spiritual gifts, he's setting a context for us to understand. In the first three verses, he talked about it is God who saved us. You will never know Jesus Unless it is the Spirit who leads you to to Jesus. That's what he talked about in verses 3. He said, you will never know Jesus. You will never call Jesus the Lord unless the Spirit of God leads you there. So the same Spirit who brought you to Jesus, now in verses 4 he says, gave you different gifts. All of you have a gift that 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 came from God. So we are saved by the Spirit, by God. Number two, we are given a gift, each one of us separately, a gift by God. But why did he give the gift? In verses 5, he explains why the gift is given. He says, the gifts are given to serve God. Serve the kingdom of God. The gift that God gave you is 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 so that you could keep it in your your shelves and lock it. No. So that you could use that gift to serve God. Not just serve God. In verses 6, he, he, uh, sorry, um, verses 7, he says, not just God, but to serve one another. For the benefit of others. In fact, in verses 6, he says this. All of us are expected to serve God with the gift that God gave us. So whether you like it or not, you are supposed to use the talent that God gave you, the gift that God gave you, to start making a difference. So how do we make a difference? In two statements, let me... um, Simplify the thought for you um, so that, you know, you, you, ta- you take away something with, with you today. Number one, you, you begin making a difference. Making a difference begins with a decision. Very simple. I'll explain that in three, three more statements. Making a, making a difference begins with a decision. You're one decision away from making a difference. What is that? The decision is this. To choose to make a difference. As simple as that. Your one decision is should be to choose to make a difference. Um, in order to explain that thought, we, I, I, we, we have cut that thought into three, three more parts so that, you know, it kind of helps you to, we dissected it so that it kind of helps you much better. That decision is this, that I want to make a difference. That's number one. The part of the decision is this, that I want to make a difference. You see, most of us live our lives as spectators. We choose to live our lives as spectators. We like spectator Christianity. We like touch-me-not Christianity. We like to go to 
church on a Sunday morning, give our tithes, fulfill our, you know, religious duties as we are supposed to do. Uh, you know, if, if there is an opportunity for us to build a church like that, we will give to the church and we think our job is done. This is my job and I think I've done my religious duty. Let me get back to my world. We like our touch-me-not Christianity. That's how we like to live our lives, spectator Christianity. It, it simply shows a lack of desire to make a difference in somebody else's life. For, for the most part of our lives, we live like that with a lack of desire to make a difference. That's why I'm, I'm pushing you a little more and I'm saying, you got to develop a desire to make a difference. You can't live your lives as cookie cutter Christians. Everybody looks the same way, behaves the same way, does the same thing every single Sunday. That's not how God wants you to be. He wants you to be a person with passion. A person with, who's, who's saying, I got to do something with my life. I got to make a difference in somebody else's life. You know, we choose to stay away from, from choosing to make a difference. Is uh, probably because of lack of desire or probably because we had bad experiences in the past. Chances are some of you did try to make a difference and did fail. For some reason, for a thousand reasons. And then you said, oh, I tried. I think I'm better, better as a Sunday Christian. You had a, a failure bec uh, in your attempt or maybe you were betrayed by somebody whom you trusted and worked with. A pastor like me. Or a church like this that you had bad experiences with them, when you chose to join them and chose to make a difference, nothing really happened. In fact, you got the one who got really hurt and you decided, nah, I think I'm better as Sunday morning Christian. The problem is this, when Jesus comes back and on the judgment day, when he's going to invite you to come and give an account of the spiritual gifts he gave you, he's going to ask you, what did you do with them? At that time, you can't say, I did not use them because Pastor Chaitanya was a bad pastor. You can't say that. You can't say, I didn't like Capstone Church, so I didn't use my gifts. I don't think that's a good excuse for God. Are you listening? He's going to ask you the account for the gift that he gave you. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with that? And there is nothing, no other excuse, no excuse about a pastor or a church or a ministry that hurt you or a, or a ministry that betrayed you can give you an excuse for not using the gift that God gave you. So you better develop a desire to serve God. You see, Paul makes it a very, a very clear to us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, sorry, chapter 1, verses 9. He says this, God saved us and then called us to his holy work. We thought after getting saved, our job is done. No, 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 no. He not only saved us, he called us to his holy work. So technically, the life that you're living, you're living in debt to him, right? So you better live for his holy work. Not for Microsoft. Not for Google but for him. You live for him at Google. You live for him at Microsoft. But you live for him. So, uh, um, I want to make a difference. But the decision that does, does not end there, I want to make a difference by doing something that makes a difference. Listen to that statement very carefully. By doing something that makes a difference, not something that is different. Are you listening? It's not doing something different. It's doing something that makes a difference. Many of us don't do anything because we think we are supposed to do something different. No, 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 no. God called you to make do something that makes a difference. That's something you should miss today. You see, you may be doing what others are also doing. 
You may be doing something that may not look big or spectacular like Pastor Eshwan singing. You may not be able to do that. What you are asked to do, what you are given to do, may not be big, may not be spectacular. The gift that God gave you may not be big. But whatever you do with that gift, everything that you do with that gift, if you are serving God, if you are doing it for the benefit of others, God will always use that to bring a result, to make a difference. Everything that you do in the kingdom matters. Remember that. Everything that you do in the kingdom matters. This morning I had our team meeting. Uh, at, the, at our team meeting I talked about, hey listen, um, get up from where you are. We, you know, we usually sit together. We pray together before we start the service. Um, our team and I told them uh, to walk around uh, this place and lay their hands on the chairs and begin to pray. I know they're empty chairs. But pray over them. Because every person who sits in that chair, that they may be touched by the presence of God today. That they would receive the voice of God, the word of God. That they would, you know, something would happen in their lives. That they would let's not walk away uh, uh, empty, you know, as they came in. But they would be filled with something and they would walk away from this place um, joyful. Now, praying over an empty chair may look silly, you know. I told them at the end of the prayer, I told them, see... Even though it may look empty, but your prayers will bring an effect in the lives of, lives of people who are going to sit in those chairs. If something happens in your life today, that's because morning somebody prayed over that chair. That anybody who sits there would receive something today. Everything that you do matters in the kingdom of God, even a small prayer. That's why Paul goes on to talk about not doing something different, but doing something that makes a difference because that's the one that lasts the test of time. He talked about how in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15, challenging us to build our lives, to do our work on solid foundation, that on the judgment day, the work that you do may be of value, he says. It will not be burnt away in fire, but it will stand the test of fire. May you, Capstonian, be a person who does something that makes a difference in somebody's life. But it's not just, I want to make a difference by doing something different, something that makes a difference. There's a third part to that decision. It's this, this. That I want to make a difference by doing something that makes a difference with people who want to make difference. You see, sometimes a journey towards our dream, sometimes the journey towards making a difference can become exhausting for us. Because we can be lone warriors, right? We could be trying to make a difference and nothing really happens and we kind of get tired at some point. But what if you surround yourself with people who, who have the same passion, who have the same dream, who also want to make a difference with their lives? You would then begin to enjoy everything that you do. Every day becomes a joy for you. Surround yourself with people who want to make a difference. Don't sit with sloths, those who want to watch Amazon Prime videos. My wife must be laughing at the back right now. But join people who want to make a difference. I love serving in this church. I love this church. Uh, not because I pioneered it. I love this church because of the people who serve along with me. The dream team, as we call all our volunteers, the dream team makes it joyful for me to serve in this church. Every Sunday, I enjoy the time that I stand here, the 45 minutes, 50 minutes time that I stand here and bring the word. I could do it with, with full heart, with joy, because of what they do behind the screens. Right from the beginning of our church, I had people, God helped me by putting people together with, you know, around me who have the same dream like me. They also want to make a difference with their lives. A guy like Andrew walked into our church as a Sunday school student 12 years ago. But every he's not here this, this, this right now in the last six months. He's studying in Bangalore right now. But 
um, even from there, he would still, his heart would right now be with us, you know, watching Facebook Live or something like that. That I, I'm glad that I, God put uh, me around a guy like him, a little kid who grew up in front of my eyes, but taught me how to be passionate about serving God. That he would, no matter who shows up every Sunday, that he would show up every single Sunday to make sure all our services run well, to make sure everything is running well. You know, at some point, our production became um, so laid back because Andrew was there, that if Andrew is there, everything can get done. So people would come late because they know Andrew is already there. I'm glad God put me around a person like that. I'm glad God put me around a person like Selvin or Priya. That they love God. When they, you know, they, don't, don't look at them as, as people who are leading worship. From the time I gave them the responsibility to lead worship, I've always seen them to be people who came early. Even after they had a kid, come what may, whatever happens in their lives, however, I know the kind of difficulties that they've gone through, both of them. Uh, the loss of many things in their lives. In spite of what was happening in their life, they chose to show up every single Sunday, early in the morning. Ju now is, is walking around, is, you know, she's growing tall and walking around. But when she was a small little kid, they would still come with her. Early morning to this church, when we were a tabernacle. This is where Ju would get bath, Ju would get dressed. This is where she would, uh, uh, you know, get ready for the church, the little one. Because the parents are serving in this church. When you have people like that around you, man, you can conquer the world. With people who make, who want to make a difference. A person like uh, Ashwant, you know Ashwant doesn't have to be with us. His father's got his own church, you know that? If Ashwant wants, he can get his own church. But he chose to believe in what we are doing here. He decided that he wants to give his life to this church as long as God wants him to be here so that he can serve in this church. When he could have been a senior pastor of another church, people who want to make a difference. The pastor at Narsinghi, Nani, walked into our church as a, as, as a student and uh, uh, he loved God. He loved what God is doing here. He, the, uh, that he, he's an IIT graduate, by the way. That um, in spite of his work, his, his job as, as, as a software developer, he's got a business of uh, uh, software development, he's, he, he's, he's got many other multitude of works, and still, in spite of all those works, he still chooses to serve in a campus. Do you know, do you know how crampy that can get with all the works? Just being one pastor, oh, you know, pastor of one church itself is crazy enough for me. I can actually look at Nani and I'm feeling like, oh my God, this guy can teach me how to work, how to serve God. There are, I can give names, people like Joseph, people like Vishal, people like Jenny or Nupur. Or, uh, I, you know, I can go through the list. I can tell their stories. But the point is this, every single member in the dream team wants to make a difference. That's why they're there. They show up every single Sunday in spite of what happens. Come rain, shine, snow. I know it's never going to snow, but snow. They're still going to show up. That's probably why the wise men told in ex 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9, two are better than one. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. I actually think our church grew not because of me, not because of Pastor Janet, but because of the dream team. I actually believe that. I mean, I'm standing in the presence of God, standing, speaking for God. And so I cannot lie. So I'm telling you the truth. I know deep in my heart that I'm not the reason why this church grows. The reason, church, the reason this church grows is because of the team that's, that's there sitting behind me. It's great to be with people like that. So your decision should be this. I want to make a difference by doing something that makes a difference with people who want to make a difference. 
That's how you begin to make a difference. One decision away. But not just decision, right? It cannot be stopped at a decision. It has to turn into an action. So you begin to make a difference. Making a difference begins by doing. With doing. Yeah, many of us have great knowledge of the scripture. I don't have to teach you about spiritual gifts. Some of you probably are experts in spiritual gifts. You know, on, on the knowledge of spiritual gifts. You could probably sit with me and argue with me for the rest of your life on how some gifts are working, some don't work, how miracles ceased at New, New Testament time, miracles don't, uh, are not here now, how tongues are not supposed to be there. You could sit there and argue with me all that you want. But I can give a guarantee that 80% of Christians who have this head knowledge have no action in their life. I don't care if you believe in speaking in tongues or not. I need you to be a Christian who does something with the gift that God gave you. I think that's what God is looking for, Christians. Who not only talk theology, but actually practice the theology. Bring that into practice. What does it matter if you agree with me or not? If you agree with my policies or not? It matters to God that you do something with your life to make a difference in somebody else's life. But you're looking at me and saying, I would love to do that. I don't have anything to do. I don't know how to do it. So let me give you a principle. We call it the Shamgar principle. I introduced it to you on the first Sunday. One verse was written about this guy, one guy who made a great impact on the human history. One verse, Judges chapter 3, verses 31, is all it was written about him. After him was Shamgar, him meaning another judge called Ehud. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of Philistines with an ox goat. And he also delivered Israel. Well, it's, you know, sometimes simple statements can be so deceiving, you know that? That they don't give the punch of actual, actually what happened. Just read through that verse carefully. It's a history there. You know, it's, it's a much bigger blockbuster than David and Goliath's story. Did you know that? We are so fascinated. Our mind is always fascinated with this little boy who walked up uh, uh, to the Hulk um, and picked up the stones and, and uh, used a sling to kill him, to, you know, bring him down. We are always so fascinated with David. We forget Chamgar's story is much bigger. David had to face one guy. He had to face 600 men. Now, I'm not discounting David's story. Eh? I'm just trying to change your focus to somebody else whom we choose to ignore. Some of you are like, the first time I'm hearing a word called Shamgar. I know. That's because your life is so focused on David. Maybe you should just see this guy. Shamgar, by what he had in his hand, must be a farmer. And I'm sure God called him to be a judge. He was happy as a farmer and of course maybe as a judge. Nothing else you hear about him in the Bible apart from being somebody who took an ox gird that, must be, that is in his hand and killed 600 men. Philistine soldiers. He was an ordinary man, seem, seemingly a nobody, but had a huge impact. When his family, his nation was threatened, he chose to overcome that threat by slaughtering down 600 men with, a, with an ox gird. I keep saying ox gird because I'm fascinated by that weapon. You know, he didn't have Iron Man suit or, 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 or um, Captain America's shield, not even a sword in his hand. He's got an ox gird. I have no idea how he overcame 600 men I keep telling this in the church, when I go to heaven, and I am going to heaven, I'm going to catch Shamgar and ask him the question, how did you do that? That must be one fascinating story to hear. In case some of you who are 
absolutely no knowledge of English, <laughs> an ox gird is a, is a tool in a farmer's hand. It's about a one and a half feet long stick with a sharp edge. That's it. Not even like our scale. It's thinner than a scale. Why would uh, a farmer have it in his hand when he tills the soil with oxen? And in case if the oxen decide not to move forward as they till the soil, the farmer would use this ox gird with a sharp edge to push it at the back of bull so that the bull would move forward. So it's technically is used to make sure the bull work, you know, do their job. I have no idea how you used it to kill six. Do, do you know Philistines at that time were more advanced in technology, at least warfare technology, um, uh, than Israelites? They had spears, they had swords, they even had uh, shields. And this farmer decides to go against it and fight and bring them down. His story, his incredible story, when all odds are against, staked up against him, and there is 100% chance, well, 600% chance that he could have been killed on that day, he still had a victory. And his story should teach us how do we begin to make a difference. Three simple words. Number one, start where you are. Start where you are. Shamgar started where he was. He wasn't in a powerful position. When he saw the 600 men probably coming to you know, uh, fight against their country or their village or his own family, I don't know what they were doing, but they were coming. When he saw the threat that was humongous, that was bigger than him, 600 times bigger than him. When he saw the threat, I'm assuming he must be plowing the, plowing the field and that's why he had an ox in his hand. So he must, be, he must be at his job, you know, simple farmer doing his job. And as he saw this threat coming, maybe the Spirit of God inspired him. I know the story is not there in the Bible. I'm just trying to assume it. Um, maybe the Spirit of God told him, hey, I want you to go against them and fight. Shamgar had 100 reasons to give to God for not going there. He could start with saying, God, I'm just a farmer. He could say, I don't have skill set. He could say, if I become a king, then I will go and fight. He could say, if I have a sword, maybe then I'll go and do it. You see, many of us waste our life waiting for things to be different to do something. Chances are most Christians are living like that. My present position in the company doesn't give me an opportunity to go on missions. My present position in the company, the salary that I'm receiving, doesn't allow me to have more free time to serve. You know, I would love to serve, but... I wish I've got a better company, better job, better position. Maybe then I'll have more freedom time, more free time to go and serve God. You, you will end up spending your entire life waiting for that opportunity. For something to be different in order to make a difference. And it will never come. You better get started today. He didn't have uh, influence, he wasn't famous, nor is he wealthy. He didn't wait for more opportune, more opportune time. He didn't wait until things got better. He didn't wait for a promotion or a raise. He decided that he's going to start where he was. A farmer with an ox cord in his hand. Don't, your, don't waste your life waiting for something to become different in order for you to do something different. Something that makes a difference. You know, the best place to start is church. Did you know that? The church is the best place to start using your gifts. This is the right place. You know why? Because you can make mistakes here. There is, there is no safer place than the church where you could begin to use your... I know some of you never wielded your, your sword, but you can start here. 
This is one place you can make mistakes with your gifts and your, your skills and we can help you to become better. Church is a great place to start. Start here. Why do you think God brought you and kept you in this place? Could it be possible that God brought you with all the skills that you've got to serve the kingdom of God through this church? Could it be possible that you thought this church has got a lot of volunteers so I don't need to do anything right now. I will wait for my opportunity. When are you going to get out from this church? Go find a church that needs you. But start doing something with your life. Start today. Even if you... You know, I, I was challenging this morning in the church. I'm going to challenge you the same thing today. Use your gifts to start serving here in this place. At least once in a month. I know I'm not demanding every single Sunday from you. But at least once in a month. To come to this place, to set up, to help in worship team, to help in standing on the door and welcoming new people and, and with a smile on, their, on your face, not, not, a, not a grudgy face, but a smile on your face, welcoming people, just offer coffee to somebody and, and sit with them and say hi to them. You can do that once in a month, not even every single Sunday, once in a month. What's the point of having a 400 member church where 390 of them are not doing anything. I'd rather you not come to this church and find another church where you can serve God. Start serving today. I understand that some of you are too shy to start serving here, but start at your workplace. Maybe there, is pe there are people who are around you who need some help and you are in a position to help them. Maybe you should do that. Workplace, college. Join on a mission trip. Do you know how important going on a mission trip is for you? Your story. You don't have to speak, speak like me. You don't have to sing songs like Pastor Ashwant. You, you don't have to do dance. You don't have to. I, today I decided to pull Ashwant, by the way. So, you don't have to do anything. You can just go and share your story. Your story. Somebody is actually waiting to hear your story. Somewhere in Bhutan, somewhere in Kenya, somewhere in Jharkhand, somebody needs to hear your story. They are looking for one person who had gone through the same experience that they are going through today and they need to hear from you. Your story makes a difference. Some of us don't go on mission trips because we think, I don't, I don't, know. I don't have skills, I don't know what to do. Just go and tell what Jesus has done for you. Start somewhere. Start where you are. Number two, use what you've got. Use what you've got. You may think your resources are limited to be successful. But remember what's got, what Shamgar has got in his hand, right? He's, he's just got, he's just got an ox, ox goat. His, his only resources were his bare hands with an ox goat. I can imagine him uh, looking at the approaching enemy and then looking down at his ox goat and then looking up and then looking down. And I'm sure his heart must have sank. I mean, if I was Shamgar, I'm definitely sure my heart would have gone down under my feet. I have no idea how I'm going to face my problem right now, this threat. I'm sure he would have looked at what he had in his hand and what is ahead of him thousand times, you know, before deciding that I'm going to use what I've got. And the moment he decided to use what's, what he's got in his hand, God then turned it into a weapon that can destroy 600 men. You see, God is always looking for people who stop giving excuses and start saying, God, this is what I've got. And I can give it to you. That's what he, he, he did with Moses, with, with his staff. Moses gave a thousand excuses. God said, What's you got? What, what did you get? What, did you, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, I've got a staff. And God used the staff. Instead of the staff, Moses could have been you know, used much better. A 
or the little guy who walked up to Jesus and said, I've got five loaves and two fish. God is always looking for what you would offer to him to use. And then man, when he begins to use it, the world would be upside down. Could it be possible that we are always looking for something better than what we have and not offering what we got to be used by God and, lo and are losing a lot of opportunities to see miracles happening in somebody else's life because of you? You may not have an ox good, and I'm sure none of you have an ox good right now. But I'm, I'm absolutely sure all of us have got something, at least three things I can think of. Number one, I'm sure every one of us have a skill or a talent that we can offer to the kingdom of God. That can be used to serve the kingdom. That can be used to help others. So stop focusing on what you don't have and concentrate on what you do have. Do you know there is so much need for a graphic designer? Not our church, but there are hundreds of churches whose websites are pathetic. But you could use your graphic designing skill or web designing skill to develop a website for somebody else. That you could, if you are a content writer, there, there are so many people who struggle with putting content together proper content together, the Christians, pastors, mission agencies, for their magazines, for, for, uh, for, uh, for sending the reports. You could be somebody who could use your content writing skill for somebody else. Or accounting. I remember, um, I know that one of our church, church leader's father, after he retired from account, account, accounting general office, that he decided to spend the rest of his life serving a mission agency, getting their accounts in order. That whole FMPB, the, the accounts of FMPB organization were set by this man. And now, and now he's with, with the Lord. But he spent his retirement time with a mission agency offering the skill that he's got. If one, he could have laid back and said, I've done enough with my life, I can rest. That you could use your musical skills, you could use your engineering skills, your architectural skills in order to design a, a church, uh, you know, like that. We are always looking for people who can come out with a design that can help us build a church in three lakhs. That you could, if you use your creativity and come out with cost cutting and come out with a design that we could use, replicate it with other places. Do you know how many churches we can build? You got the skill, but you're not using it. Use your skill. Use your strength. Use your talent for the kingdom of God. Use your dream. Your dream is a starting point. Use your dream. That, you know, your dream always gives you a passion for it uh, because it's your dream. Your passion is one of the most powerful weapons. Did you know that? To achieve something. A passionate man can achieve anything. Anything. No matter how many odds are staked up against him. He's not going to you know, take everything lying down. He's going to stand up and fight. Any dream that you have, make it a beginning point. Start with your dream. Or maybe you got a resource. That becomes, a risk, that becomes a source that fulfills somebody else's need. Your finances. The FDs that you stocked up could build somebody else's church. I don't know whether you're going to live tomorrow or not, but if you actually break it and build somebody else's church, you will live forever. Do you know that? Thank you. Your resources can help somebody else.
your material things, the things that you got, your vehicle that you don't use can actually become a transportation vehicle for somebody else. Your gadgets, your books, your own home, the resources that you got in your hand can become a source, a source that fulfills somebody's need. Uh, the extension of the kingdom of God. So this, you got, you got something in your hand. Use what you got. Number three, do what you can. At the end of the day, you got to do what you can. Not a half-hearted job. Not an obligatory job. But a job that says, I'm going to give my best to it. That's all I can do, right? You can do, that's all. Do what you can. At least there are three things you can do. I'm a three guy, right? Three points guy. You could, by now you would have recognized that. <laughs> there are three things you can do. Number one, you can pray. I told you, there is no more powerful weapon than prayer itself. The prayer can achieve a lot of things. A lot more things than you can imagine. That's the first thing that you can do. Start praying. Remember, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful. And effective, Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16. You may not be able to do many things or spectacular things, but you can pray. Start there. Um, you may not be do, able to do many things, but you can stay focused on the thing that you're doing. That's another thing that you can do. That you... You see, you could be distracted by many little things. Instead of dis being distracted by many little things, stay focused on one thing that you're doing. And it makes a lot of difference. Shamgar wasn't distracted by the weather or the crop or the, what is going to be the dinner at, uh, at his home tonight when he faced 600 men. He was not distracted by little things. He focused on the battle. It's easy to become distracted by smaller issues in our lives. Smaller issues in church. You don't like a teammate, so big deal, bye. You don't like somebody the way they talk, so what? What's stopping you from doing what God asked you to do? That person, is he the one who's going to take you to heaven? You don't like the pastor? Your pastor is not going to take you to heaven anyway. You serve God. By using what you've got, doing what you can. Don't lose your sight from the most important thing or small issues. That's why Paul talks about that in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13. He says, there's one thing that I do. I've got many things to focus on, but one thing that I do. One single thing. My eyes are on that. So basically, he's saying this. Know what matters. And maintain your focus on that. That you can do. You can pray. You can stay focused. Number three, you can never give up. That you can do. I know it may sound so cliche. But that is true. Never give up. Never stop trying. Never stop trusting God. Don't allow discouragement or doubt to overtake you in what God asked you to do. You see, regret looks back all the time. When you keep looking back, regrets fill, regret fills your life. Looking back at your past, what you've done, how many decisions you missed, how many opportunities. You, if you keep looking back, your heart would, your life would be filled with regret. If you keep looking around how big your enemy is, how many people are against you, how worse the situation. If you keep looking around, worry fills your heart. But if you keep looking up, the only thing that you get is victory. Because the battle belongs to God. And I've never seen God losing a battle. Have you seen? Maybe somebody here? So if you keep looking up, the only thing that you get in your life is victory. So stay, don't, stay focused and never give up on, on him. You're not finished until you give up. Let me close off with this. 
So now, now we know this. I can make a difference by making a decision. My decision is this, that I want to make a difference by doing something that makes a difference with people who want to make a difference. I can make a difference by doing something that makes a difference, right? And that is, I can only do that by starting where we are, where I am, using what I have, doing what I do. So I'm going to give you this opportunity today. We're, we're closing the service in a moment. Our ushers are going to come and give away a white paper to you. Start in this church. Make a commitment to God. I'm sure God will speak to you and, and tell you what you can do. We'll give you that opportunity to pray. But if you can do something, make a commitment that you're going to do that in this church. Start here. If you have not done it to any other place, start here. Or join a hosting team. Or come and help in the, you know, in, in the production team. At 4.30 in the morning, we need people to come and help us to set up this. Some of you are looking at me and saying, the reason I come at 11 o'clock service is I don't get up at 4.30. I know. So come back, come at 11 o'clock and stay back after the service and help us to take down this. You can do that. You've got strength. You may not have skills or talents, but you can give your strength. You can choose to do that. That is how you begin to make a difference. I don't want you to do every single Sunday. You can do it one Sunday in a month. I can't have all 400 here. I don't know what to give them, right? So <laughs> if you choose to do one Sunday in a month, And you can get up at 4.30 in the morning. Or you can stay back and miss lunch. Well, actually, we provide lunch if you stay back, by the way. And help us to pack up. Or you can join the worship team. You may have skills, but you're not using them. You need to start using your skills. You've got to start somewhere. Start here. Whatever God puts in your heart today, write it down. That's your commitment. It's not a compulsion, by the way. It's just that I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the Spirit. That's all. You don't have to respond. I would love for you to respond. I would love for you to make a decision. That's your decision. I can't make your decision. So I'm giving you an opportunity to make a decision and say, I'm going to serve in this church somewhere. Be a part of mission team. Be a part of a production team or worship team or hosting or Sunday school, I don't know where you want to serve. Just make a choice to start serving God. Or maybe God is talking to you, some of you, and he's saying, I want you to do this at the workplace. I don't know what he wants you to do there. But if that is what God is asking you to do, still write it down. I don't know what God is asking you to do. Maybe some of you need to do something at your home. a difference. If God is speaking to you that, write it down. If it is about the church and you want to be part of the church, please give that white paper as you walk out to us. We have the offering box there. You can drop it there or you can give it to us in our hands. But if it is something that God wants you to do outside of this church, keep that paper in your Bible. It will be a reminder to you all the time. Reminding you of your commitment to God about what you decided to do. Does it make sense? I'm going to give you this opportunity. Close your eyes all across this place. Let God minister to you. Spirit of God, let, it, let him speak to you. When he spoke something into your heart, just wait for him to, wait, I mean, he's waiting for you to respond. Respond to him. I'm going to take this moment to pray with you right now. After I pray, the worship team will continue to sing. That, that is your time to respond back to the Holy Spirit. If he spoke to you, write anything, whatever he was talking to you on the piece of paper that he gave you. See, great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. You don't have to be a great leader to make a difference. You just have to be a person who's willing to make a difference. 
Father, we want to thank you for this morning, and uh, what a joy it is to worship you together. Um, uh, your word is, is powerful, always cuts through our heart, God. And if it spoke to people today, I pray that they would respond back. And they would choose to acknowledge what you've spoken to their lives today. Make a decision that could actually be that one decision that mm, that changes the trajectory of their life, that changes them so much that they would become an influence on others, positive influence on others. Maybe they would be shaped into people uh, who become a miracle in somebody else's life. I don't know what you're speaking to people today. I know you spoke to me. I choose to respond to you, God, to what you're asking me. I pray that each one who's here today would choose to respond to you. Man, what difference can we make? So much difference that we can make if all the people in this church respond to what you're speaking to them. Disciples who choose to listen to the voice of God and choose to respond to his voice by obeying. what we have. Help us to start where we are. Give us the strength to do what we can. Bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we just worship, you know, you can continue to pray and start writing down whatever God spoke to you. We still have some time, two minutes. But as the worship team sings, just join along. my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take every moment that I'm awake Lord have your way in me Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment that I'm awake Lord, have your way in me Have your way
Kathy and of course for the service. I just, uh, we just quickly forgot about something that's very beautiful. Uh, Tanaja has been our church member for a very long time and uh, God has uh, blessed her with Kiran. They are married and they're here for the first time attending the service together. So why don't you, Tanaja and Kiran, why don't you just take a stand, let people see you. Uh, they've come together as a couple. So after this service, just go ahead and give a God blessed you to them. Now you can stand up to your feet and we will just go ahead and thank Jesus for a wonderful day today. Father, we thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, that you never fail to speak to us when we are ready to listen to you. Thank you for the word that has come out so strongly, Lord. For a few of us, it's a reminder. Lord, Father, I pray to you just that um, with whatever we have, help us to start off to make a difference, Father God, in wherever we are, in whatever you're speaking to our hearts, Father God. Let us uh, not be complacent about it, Jesus, but quicken our hearts, Holy Spirit, God. Give us the burden. Help for each one of us to make a difference in the kingdom, Father God. Lord, we thank you for all our children at the Sunday school as they have learned or uh, taught about you or heard about you or sang about you, Jesus. I pray, Father God, that these kids will stand up to confess that you will be their Lord and Savior one day, Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done for today. Lord, all glory, honor belongs to you. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the food for the rest of the week, even as we uh, ponder on it and feed on it. Lord, I pray that you'll strengthen us, help us to receive what we are supposed to receive, help us to become much better. And as we come back next Sunday, Lord, help us to worship you and praise you for all that you have been doing and all that you will do. We bless your name, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive all our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for now and forever. Amen. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the awesome fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of us, now and forever, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day.